Good morning, Professor Spear. This is Anna Trollinger. I'm starting presentation one for Econ 4210, Spring 21, um, your Tuesday and Thursday course. So if I can get this to start. Okay. So just for my own benefit, I included the instructions here um, across a few slides and the requirements that you asked of us to complete. So here I um, included the questions you wanted us to address from our chosen topic. The topic I decided to pick is the snow removal from local streets and interstate highways in Memphis. Um, addressing the questions who should do it and why, how should it be paid for and why, and what are the economic problems associated with this and why it might not get done well. So the first slide um, I wanted to start on was who should do it and why, and a general response I included was local or state government depending on the street location, whether it was a highway or back roads. Um, so I started out by saying snow removal from local streets and interstate highways in Memphis should be provided by the local and or state government depending upon the street location. Local street snow removal should probably be done by the local government while highways should be cleared by the state government. The TBO model implies goods or services should be provided at the local level if there are tax benefit linkages present, no externalities, and not large economies of scale. In this scenario, there are clear tax benefit linkages. <clears throat> a good or service has a strong tax benefit linkage if the provision of the good or service and its quality are easily observable to the taxpayer. For example, um, can people actually see and benefit from their tax dollars? If these linkages are strong, the service should be provided locally. People would easily be able to observe the snow removal and benefit from it, therefore seeing where their tax dollars have gone. Few to no externalities are present in this scenario. For example, how much does this local choice affect other local areas? Um, clearing snow in one town may or may not affect the next town. Um, but seeing as there are no externalities when snow removal is provided locally, local provision makes the most logical sense here. Um, and finally, economies of scale refers to the efficiency of providing the good or service on a large scale rather than a small scale. If there were big economies of scale, it would make sense to provide this service by the national government, but in this case, they are not large economies of scale. <clears throat> Next slide. I answered the question, how should it be paid for and why? And my general response is clearly taxpayers' money, but specifically which budget it comes from. So on the first um, block on the bottom left, I did some research and figured out where that tax money could come from, whether it was street budget or general fund budget. And I found that the money could come from street budgets, which are made up of local wheel tax and state and federal gas taxes, or from the general fund budget, which primarily consists of city property and sales tax dollars, which is typically used for most city operations. In the middle box, I delved into um, why you should probably utilize the general fund budget for snow removal. Um, and I said this decision is the most logical because most important city functions already depend on this budget, um, like libraries, parks, pools, um, etc. And the city needs to ensure that the general fund can support services like snow removal. Um, as plowing local roads is usually a task for yo yokel, local municipalities, paying for them in property tax revenues is logical. <clears throat> and then the top right box. Um, not only did I want to figure out how it should be paid for, but who should be paid to do it. So regarding the city employees, contracts must be put in place to help manage the risk that comes with unpredictable winter weather. The city is then responsible for the costly insurance required when they put their staff in dangerous situations, also bearing the risk that winter will be worse than expected. Cities might often hire contractors to do this job, seeing as they can be cheaper than using city employees. The fact of the matter is that keeping snow removal costs low is a real political issue in America's snowy regions. 
<clears throat> and then the final slide, I responded to the question, what are the economic problems associated with this and why might it not get done well? <coughs> Excuse me. And I um, went into detail and I started out with something basic. Weather can affect the economy in various ways. We all know that. Um, property damages, critical infrastructure, human health, and overall productivity and other sectors within the governments can be negatively affected. An understandable problem that cities face is not knowing the severity of the wintry weather conditions until it actually occurs. A bad winter can mean fiscal disaster and last-minute cuts to city services. <clears throat> The economic cost of snow removal is much less than the actual cost of providing those services, according to the research that I did. Um, evaluating how well government interventions work is a key factor in this scenario. There could be situations where the government's decision might not go well. Questions arise like, did they solve or fix the problem they were intended to? Did they create new problems along the way? Um, and or are they worth the costs? <clears throat> These could all be accounted for amidst no removal by state and or local governments. Finally, I wanted to conclude by saying thank you for listening and watching, and I hope this turns out well. I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks.